At the beginning of the school year, I like to introduce terms like elements, compounds, atoms, molecules, pure substances, mixtures, and these are difficult concepts for the students to understand. But I find if you use models that it helps to bring this home to them. So what I do to introduce an activity that they will perform is to first go to the board and show them some diagrams that I have placed on the board. Now, I'm going to be using these little circles here, and I tell them that one circle represents an atom, but if you take two circles and they're touching, that's going to represent a molecule. So that way, when they go to analyze the four diagrams up here, they'll at least be able to make that distinction from the get-go. Now, when we classify matter, what's the first thing we decide? We decide whether it's a pure substance or a mixture. So I would actually have students come up and determine what is what up here. So we look in the container and we see does one entity in the container look the same as the other entity, and that's how we decide whether something is a pure substance or a mixture. So using that as our criterion, we would say that this container is a pure substance, and this container is a pure substance, now they get a little bit confused when you get down here because they see two different colors. But what you stress is, does this look the same as this? And of course they have to answer yes. So that also is a pure substance. The last one over here, obviously a lot of different kinds of things. We can easily label that as a mixture. Now what's the next thing down when you're classifying matter? Once you decide something is a pure substance, then it's knowing whether it is a, an element or a compound. So we're going to go through that right now. So in other words, do you have the same type of atom in the container? Do you have the same color in this particular case? So obviously we have an element here. And again, this might be a little bit tricky because we have things connected together, but they're all red. They're all the same type of atom. So that also is an element. And down here, since we have two different types of atoms, that obviously would be a compound. Now, we don't use that classification with the mixtures here. We are just taking those substances that are pure substances and classifying them as elements versus compounds. Well now, I like them to be able to count up and identify what is actually in the box. So what we're going to do is we're going to determine how many atoms are in each container, and then we're also going to determine how many molecules are in each container. Now, when you do this activity, do you have to use these little cards with magnets on the back? Not necessarily. In fact, in my class I have a whiteboard that is magnetic, and so I'm able to use some things with the magnets and some with just color coding with uh, dry erase markers. So this just makes it a little bit colorful for our presentation today, but I wouldn't want to discourage anybody from doing this because they think they have to go and cut out all these little pieces of paper. But it does make it handy if you have a student come up and you just have them place it on the board. I will admit to that. All right, so let's count here. We have two atoms. Do we have any molecules in here? No. So we're going to put a zero here. When we go over to this one, again, it's pretty easy for them to figure out the atoms because they can just count up the circles. So obviously we have six atoms, and we have, count them, one, two, three, molecules. All right, going down to this bottom one on the left, one, two, three, four atoms, and we have two molecules. Now, let me mention that I wouldn't have these numbers sitting out for them. They would have to write those in, or I would write them in from a class response. I wouldn't want them to be able to go, oh, which one of those fits? But uh, we've got them here so that they're handy. All right, and on our last container, one, two, three, four, five atoms, and we just have two molecules. And then we're going to write some formulas. But these formulas are just going to be based on the color. 
So if you have a red, it's going to be R. If you have a yellow, it's going to be Y. If you have a green, it's going to be G. And so then what we can do is we can say, OK, we would represent this as 2R. We have two things, and they are each red. We would represent this as 2GY, green and yellow, and we have two of them. And then over here, we have 1, 2, 3. 3R2. And lastly, for our mixture, we have one GY, we have one R, and we have one Y2. And this would be an introduction to the activity that I'm going to have my students perform. And so this would be actually up there on the board for them for reference, but it would introduce an activity that they will be doing with paper clips. And what they'll be doing is using three different size paper clips. And those paper clips I refer to as jumbo and regular and small. And so actually the vinyl covered paper clip doesn't really matter about the color. In other words, what we're looking at strictly here is size. In this case, size does count. So let's go over here and look at our board. The students would, been, would be given a piece of paper like this, which they would put flat on their desk, and a, and a bunch of paper clips. And uh, it would be up to them to construct these models. So I'm going to actually hang the models on this foam board, but I want you to understand that my students would be doing it on a flat board. So let me just stick these on here. Now, this is... 2JBSM2. What does that mean? Well, first of all, I'm going to have two things. And when I put them up here, I'm going to have a jumbo and two smalls. Now, the question is, well, why did you put the jumbo in the middle? And that's because I tell my students that I want them to go for symmetry, OK, that that's usually the case. Now, here is our two jumbos with a small in the middle, and we have one R2 here. We have two smalls. And notice the difference between having the number in front, which means we're going to have two separate things, versus having that subscript. So let me quickly put the rest of these up here so that you can see how they are constructed. And then what my students would be doing would be answering the questions just like I had done at the board. In other words, they would be counting up the atoms and counting up the molecules. Now, when my students are doing this at their respective places and they're working in groups, I can go around and before they even get to answering the questions about how many atoms and how many molecules, and what's a pure substance, and what's a mixture, and what's an element, and what's a compound, I can check their models. Because obviously, if the models are not correct, then their answers are not going to be correct. And uh, the easiest way to point out to them if something is a mixture is to look for the plus sign. If you have a plus in between, it's a mixture. And uh, so here is our finished product. And I would go around and check this with the students and then say, OK, now go up and total the atoms and the molecules and essentially go through what we just did up at the magnetic board. Now, once they finish that activity, not necessarily in the same class, but at the very latest in the next class, I do an assessment with them. And I'm going to show you what that assessment looks like. What I would do would be to show them this particular model here. Now, in my class, what I would do is have a transparency of this and show it on an overhead projector. But there are other ways that you could represent it in your class. But the thing is that the students would be given tile boards, and they would be writing the answer and flashing them for me. And so we would show this, and I would pose questions. And it's a real quick way to see if they've really grasped the understanding. So you, uh, you might say, OK, in the D line here, 
on your board write which are mixtures. Write D1 or D2 or D3, and there could be more than one answer. So they see that this would be the mixture. Or you can say in C3, uh, tell me how many atoms are in there. And they'd count all the circles. That's easy. How many molecules? Just two. And so you could go through a variety of things and asking them about what's a pure substance, what's a mixture, how many atoms, how many molecules. And I do want to mention that there is an additional way to use this particular diagram, and that is when you get to a unit on chemical reactions. Because in chemical reactions, we talk about types of reactions. And so you can say, okay, uh, what's happening when you go from uh, taking D1 and you mix it with D2 and you get D3? And that's a simple replacement. Or what happens if you go from A3 to B3 decomposition? So it's another way to reinforce that. And you can also put uh, identities on these, on these circles if you want. You could say, uh, which one of these represents carbon dioxide? All right, A2. Okay, so it's a nice way to reinforce, a nice way to assess them. And uh, when you talk about learning, it's not sufficient just to have the macroscopic and the symbolic. That middle portion about models I think really crystallizes this for them. So again, this is when you're introducing how to classify matter and some very important terms in chemistry that they will be using for the entire year.